Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. This segment of big three row crossovers is growing and this is one of the latest to hit the market. That is the Subaru Ascent, the first ever three row crossover from the brand and we're going to put it to the test. So in this video we're going to drive around on this kind of sloppy day and see how it handles and then we will tell you how it compares to the best vehicles in this segment. Let's start this one with the walk around. So under the hood of the Ascent, and the only engine you can get in an Ascent, is a 2.4 liter, four cylinder turbocharged boxer engine. And it makes 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque sent through a CVT. And just in case you don't know what a boxer is, that means that the cylinders in this engine are laying flat. So the engine sits a lot lower in the vehicle, helps with your center of gravity, among some other things. Uh, 20s on the sort of the nicest models are pretty much standard in this segment. Now besides that, you get some of the chrome sort of bright work, body color mirror caps. Um, yeah, it makes the ascent look a little bit nicer. What I really wanna show you though, is the practicality at the rear end. So of course this is a, powered hatch and what I think is actually cool about this ascent is what's going on underneath this cargo cover back here so you open it up first of all you have a storage spot right here for your uh, spring-loaded cargo cover but then you also have this great little space down here which you can stash groceries or toys or whatever the heck you might be carrying I always love to see you know that time and energy spent on these little spaces of course, I can't get this in quite right right now, but I'll get that in a second. Now, if you want to fold down these seats back here, you have straps up here on the shoulders. If you pull up on those straps, you can recline and you can also fold it forward. So no powered seats here, but you can do just about everything from right back here. Now let's go climb in and I'll show you how much space the passengers have in here. It's time for our new segment. Do, 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 do. Does Steve fit? <laughs> yep, well, I'm gonna jam myself in the ascent and we'll see how much passenger space is really here. So first of all, let's talk about how the seats fold. There's two different ways to fold this second row. Really well illustrated on the handles on the side of the seat. So first way, that comes down, you can fold her flat. And then actually before I fold it down, I wanna point something else out to you guys. And it has everything to do with the amount of space you have down here for your feet. So you can see here the second row is much lower and then this big bump a couple inches comes up. And the issue with this big bump here is it continues all the way into the back. So the third row leg room is gonna suffer for it. And uh, now it's time to climb in and I'll show you. So you pull this handle here on the side of the seat. It tilts forward and tumbles like so. And uh, now I can see how well I'm gonna fit here once I climb myself in. And I will say there's not a bad amount of space and there is a nice step here. I like that they put that step right there. And here I go. Gotta fold this headrest up. Now these seats do recline a little bit and I'm gonna need that. <laughs> there we go. And whoo, baby. <laughs> well, everybody, I don't fit back here. This is. 31 inches of leg room. That's obviously an issue, but honestly, it's the headroom. I cannot sit in this back seat and not be jammed into the ceiling. I stand at six foot two. And honestly, if you're six foot, yeah, you're probably not gonna fit back here. So as third rows go, definitely not the most spacious here in the Subaru. Um, the Hyundai Palisade uh, and the Volkswagen Atlas, definitely better for your third row passengers. So the third row is not gonna work for me, but generally adults are sitting in the second row anyway. So let me climb in here and see how it feels. So this is 38 and a half inches of second row leg room. Not the biggest second row in the segment, but pretty close to it. And I'm totally comfortable. I have enough headroom because my feet sit lower. I have enough leg room. My knees aren't up too tall. I'm quite comfortable. And actually these seats are kind of bolstered, a little bit contoured. I actually really like it back here. These are quite nice. Now, when it comes to amenities here in the Ascent, I do have my temperature controls down here. I do have a heated seat. I also have auto, which is always nice for your HVAC settings. And then I have two USB ports. 
The only thing I'm missing in this vehicle is an actual plug. It looks like it should be right there, but this is just a blank. So yeah, it'd be nice to have a plug back here. But... What about the cup holder? Oh, well, yeah, I got two cup holders down here and they actually have a little trick. They fold out there. Always nice too that they put in these adjustable cup holders these days. So when you got your big gulp, it's gonna be able to hold on to it. Yeah, no, you know what? Second row passengers are gonna be quite comfortable in their Subaru Ascent. Oh, and actually it's funny you mentioned cup holders. There's also these really nice cup holders molded into the door right up here. That's a really nice place to have them. There's more cup holders down here by my right knee. Uh, Subaru really went crazy with the cup holders here in the Ascent, but you know what? Why not, I guess? It is convenient and uh, makes for a nice road trip when you got a nice drink. Well, folks, here we are now in this Subaru Ascent. So the first thing I want to talk about is another video we made. We compared the Mazda CX-9 with the Hyundai Palisade and the Volkswagen Atlas. And of course, those are all big three row crossovers. And this Subaru Ascent is right there in that category. So at the end of this video, we will tell you how this thing stacks up with those three. But for now, we just got to talk more about this Subaru. So. In my head, the thing that differentiates the Subaru uh, is twofold, really. Full-time all-wheel drive, that's symmetrical full-time all-wheel drive that Subaru is quite famous for. And second of all, is actually ground clearance. Um, it's only 8.7 inches, so it's not huge, but that is more ground clearance than the others in this segment. So when you do get out there in some sloppy, rough stuff, yeah, this, this might be a little bit better. Um, and we did a little bit of that today. So we hit a little bit of a uh, unmaintained snowy road. Dad was driving, so now, Dad, you can let them know how, how did it feel in the, on that snowy road. Yeah, it felt fine. The thing with Subaru is it's, it's a known quantity with its symmetrical all-wheel drive. It's something that's been around for a long time. So when I got into this vehicle, even though it's a new model, it feels like pretty much any other Subaru I've ever driven. Uh, with the exception, of course, is that, yeah, it's got a larger footprint. Um, not huge, but big enough. Yeah. Well, folks, there's a big flock of geese, and that can only mean one thing. Springtime is coming to Southern Ontario, and I'm excited. So the thing I was interested in is, is how that all-wheel drive worked in the snow. So we did uh, two launches, like we like to do, one with traction control fully defeated, and then one with Subaru's X mode on. So this Ascent has X mode, which essentially is its off-road mode. If you're going into some gnarly terrain, put it in X mode. And I think the takeaway Dad and I both had is it actually wasn't that different. Even in X mode, it felt like it rolled on the power differently. It felt like, you know, it wanted to make sure it had traction before it gave you the power. However, again, my takeaway is that this all-wheel drive system is always working. It's just always there. So even with a, a button to select X mode, it doesn't really matter. It's just good to know it's, it's always there. There's always power getting to all four wheels. And again, you drove it, Dad, but on those takeoffs, it looked totally confident to me. Well, from inside, that's exactly how it felt for me too. I was looking for a significant difference in launch between uh, X mode and not X mode, but remembering, of course, it is all wheel drive all the time. Really, the only thing that was changing was the acceleration algorithm that as far as I could tell, mm -hmm. um, and where it was pushing the power to front back. Um, and it was it was incremental as opposed to like a, a, a big, big shift. Change. So when I get into it, even with traction control off, I still could feel that the computer was making decisions for me in the background. Mm -hmm. It was still deciding how much power to apply at any given moment. And it got me to speed with the least amount of wheel spin, which is I think where they're trying to get to here. Yeah. So as opposed to a violent wheel spin without X mode and then say a quicker acceleration with X mode, less wheel spin, that's not what this did at all. Um, it was just working with the acceleration. And I don't know, for some people, for most people, the computer will make better decisions than you will. So that's okay. So right off the top, Steve mentioned that this powertrain has a CVT. Now, CVTs have been around for quite some time. Um, there is a residual resentment towards them for a lot of people because they're high revving and they're buzzy and they just seem funny. Um, however, Subaru has gone a long way to install basically shift points 
It's not actually shifting, it's just simulating the shifting. Now, a lot of guys have tried to do this, but where Subaru's concerned, I'd say they've succeeded completely. I would dare anybody to drive this not knowing it had a CVT and suddenly go, oh my God, it has a CVT. I'm telling you, you don't feel it at all. So from that point of view, I would say Subaru, yes, you have succeeded. Nice, and and you said it, you know, lots of companies have tried this whole, you know, simulate the shifting, but even that can even sometimes feel stranger. <laughs> so the fact that, like you said, it's natural, you get in and go and you don't feel anything out of the ordinary, that's definitely a, a big pro for this ascent. I think we can both agree that the Hyundai Palisade, in terms of interior, is the best in the segment. That thing is just unbelievably good looking on the inside. This Ascent is nice. There's nothing wrong with it. The leather's good. I think the seats are comfortable. Not quite as, doesn't have that wow factor that the Palisade does. Um, looking at the Atlas, it just straight up doesn't have the size of the Atlas. That's the, why the Volkswagen is good, because it's just so big. So if you really appreciate size, yeah, the Volkswagen is the one to get. Uh, compared to the CX-9, I mean, the Mazda doesn't have the most space. Uh, it's probably way more, probably, it is more stylish than the Subaru. I prefer the way the CX-9 looks, but, you know, I don't think you're really coming to this segment for looks. So, again, where does this Ascent kind of fall into the mix? Well, good second row space, but not the best third row. And that's what it's going to come down to, for me anyways. We keep saying it, third row crossovers. That is so important back there um, because you're gonna have people in there all the time. So from that perspective, the Volkswagen and the Hyundai are better choices. If you're willing to look at each one of these vehicles with a completely unbiased point of view, then yeah, you may end up coming to that same conclusion. However, the reason that people like Subaru jumped into this is because you've got a huge group of people who love Subarus. They swear by Subarus. And Subaru saw them leaving them because they didn't have a third row. Yep. Going into something else because they couldn't accommodate them. So. All that stuff aside, Super is going to pick up a crap load of sales simply because people will grow out of their two-row Subaru and they are going to grow into the third row. Now they don't need to go to somebody else. They can simply buy that next up Subaru. And frankly, that's what's working for these other manufacturers as well, Mazda and Volkswagen. For sure. And in that vein, again, if you look at it in a bit more of a vacuum, as a Subaru, this is a good Subaru, it's a classic Subaru. Boxer engine, really strong all-wheel drive system, and like I said, just a hair more ground clearance than the other ones in this segment. And I think that's what you expect out of a Subaru, right? That, those are the images that you conjure. A Little bit more off-road ready, and this ascent is that. Wow, you should take a picture of a whole pile of turkey. There's a lot of turkeys in that field. Okay, let me show you guys the turkeys. Yeah, yeah, sorry, we just had to stop here. You wouldn't believe all these turkeys. Okay, here we go. And now they're running. Wasn't ready. Now they're running because they think we want them for dinner, which we don't. Turkeys. That's a lot. What is it? A flock of turkeys? A gaggle of turkeys? A murder of turkeys? Somebody let us know. What do you call a group of turkeys? Well, folks, we're coming to the end of this one, so what's the verdict on this ascent? Well, let me tell you, in this segment, it's not the biggest, it's not the most powerful or the most stylish. But when the going gets sloppy, this is probably one of the best choices. Plus, if you already loved Subaru, this thing checks all the Subaru boxes. So yes, for those Subaru faithful, I think they're gonna be very happy. So like I said, that's the end of this one. Of course, I wanna hear what you guys think. Go in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this ascent and how it compares to the rest of the segment. As always, while you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member of the channel, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we are testing next. See ya.